Before starting, assess the condition and structure of the walls and floor. The walls should be of suitable quality and structure to hold the fixings in place. Refer to the installation guide for details of recommended fixings. Mark the position of the wardrobe on the floor and walls to ensure it will be horizontal and vertical throughout. Mark a horizontal line at 1,715mm for the top of the shelf support rail. If using an end panel, mark a vertical line where it is to be installed. Cut the shelf support rail to length and securely fix to the back wall using appropriate fixings. These fixings should be covered with linen cover caps later. Do not fit any side or end battens. Cut the end panel to its finished height and to 657mm wide and scribe to the skirting board. Fix a minimum of three mini corner blocks on the inside back edge of the end panel. The bottom block may be fixed to the skirting board. The top block should be fixed approximately 150mm from the top and the remaining bracket should be positioned centrally. Secure the end panel at 90 degrees to the back wall using appropriate fixings, ensuring that it is vertical. This sets out the critical dimensions for the rest of the installation to take place. For longer shelves, a shelf support panel will have to be notched around the support rails and skirting board. Refer to the installation guide for dimensions. The support panel can be fitted centrally or in line with where two doors overlap. Use two blocks to fix back to the wall using appropriate fixings. These should be aligned with the fixings on the end panel. Fix blocks to the top of the panel for fixing to the shelf. Cut the shelf and screw it to the front and back rails and the end panel using the blocks and screws provided. The joints between two longer rails and two longer shelves should not be aligned. Ensure the joints are staggered. Fit covers to all the blocks to hide the screws. Once completed, the structure should be sturdy. Do not screw the shelf support panels to the floor until after the frame has been fitted in place. Where the floor is not level, the L-shaped plinth must be scribed to a finished height of 38mm. Refer to the installation guide for instructions. When scribed, turn the base rail over so that the two grooves are facing the floor. Pilot drill the L-shaped plinth and then screw it to the base rail using the countersink screws provided, taking care not to screw into the grooves. On longer runs, the L-shaped plinths should be butt joined in the centre. Fit the adjustable feet into the underside of the base rail. Turn over the completed base rail and place in position. Adjust the feet until it is perfectly level. Do not fix it to the floor. If required, cut and join the top rails using the brackets provided. If the rail has a gloss side and a matte side, fix the brackets on the matte side. After fitting the brackets, turn the joined rail over. Drill the dual top track along its drilling guide channels at regular intervals, with the last drill holes approximately 50mm from each end. Then, screw the top track to the top rails. Slacken the bolts on the soft closed pistons using a 7mm spanner. Position the pistons in the track so that the square heads are to the extreme left and right. On four-door installations, position two extra soft closed pistons in the centre of the front track so that the square head of each is 6mm from the centre of the track and 12mm apart. Secure all pistons using a 7mm spanner.
screw the top and base to the vertical uprights to create a frame. If space is tight, the frame can be built vertically. Use three screws at the bottom and four screws at the top. Fix five angle brackets to the outside face of the frame uprights, spaced equally apart, to fit the infills later. Position them so that the front edge of the frame upright and the exposed face of the angle bracket are flush. Repeat along the length of the top track assembly. Fit two angle brackets on the back edge of the frame, 1,689.5mm from the base. The back edge of the frame and the exposed edge of the bracket should be flush. The wall spacer panels should be 142mm wide and the correct height to sit 38mm from the floor and flush with the ceiling, cut to suit if necessary. Fix one spacer panel to the inside of the end panel 20mm back from the front edge by pilot drilling and then using the screws provided. Fix the other spacer panel to the wall using suitable fixings. Set the completed door frame centrally in the aperture or centrally between the end panel and the wall. Ensure that the base is level and that the frame uprights are vertical. Then secure the uprights to the shelf using one angle L bracket for each upright to keep the frame in position during installation. Scribe each of the side infills to size, ensuring that both are equal widths. Fit a square jointing plate to the top of each infill on the inner face for fixing infills later. Secure the infill panels in their final position. A screwdriver extension bit will be required to gain access to the fixings inside the wardrobe. Nylon door positioners will be supplied in the plot box. Fit them into the front track for three door installations and the back track for four doors. Refer to the fitting instructions for full details. Tap the aluminium bottom tracks into the grooves provided on the base rail. Adjust the anti-jump catches on the top of each door as low as possible by turning clockwise. Fully close the screw in the top of the bottom rollers by turning clockwise. Tilt the door away from you and lift into the top track. Then lower the door into the bottom track ensuring the wheels sit within the track. Release the wheel locking mechanism by pressing the bottom and then adjust the wheels using the screw at the top until all doors are aligned correctly. Adjust the anti-jump catches until the mechanism just touches the top track and then turn the screw clockwise by a quarter of one turn. If the mechanism catches, adjust the screw slightly in a clockwise direction. Fit the hanging rail centrally between the wall and the door using the brackets provided and attach the Urbano branding badge on the shelf. Carefully chalk around the inside and outside of the wardrobe and where the wardrobe meets the ceiling. Remove any protective film and clean the wardrobe for any marks. For more details, please refer to the full fitting instructions.